All right, good people, Steve Baskus here. I'm going to go over the Avid S1 for a blind or visually impaired person. So all you blind or visually impaired audio engineers, stay tuned. In front of me, I have the Avid S1. And if you were to touch the very top edge, you would feel a platform where an iPad sits. If you follow to the left corner, the bottom left, you know, top left corner, I, I should say, <laughs> there's a small circular button. This button and this row I'm going to go over. So this first button, the circular button, is the uh, surface shift button. To the right of that is the back button. To the right of that are two, two buttons together, and these are the page previous and page next button. To the right of that, you'll find five buttons that are close together. The first button is insert. Second button, EQ. Third button is dynamic or dynamics. Fourth button is auxiliary. And fifth button is uh, pan. Moving to the right is flip. To the right of that. And that flip button is a square button. So to the right of this, and it's by itself. To the right of the flip button is the bank previous and next. And then to the right of it is the nudge previous and next. And those, those sets of buttons are together. So again, that row is, is, is at the very top edge of the Avid S1 control surface. Directly, if we move back to the first circular button on the far top left, and go below it, you'll feel two small buttons next to an encoder knob. These two small buttons, the top button is select, the bottom button is in, and to the right of that is the encoder knob. This repeats uh, eight times, because there's eight faders or eight channel strips. So let's drop below the encoder knob, and below it, you'll find large buttons. This is the solo and mute button. And then kind of off to the bottom left of those large buttons are two smaller buttons. Select is the top button. Record is the lower button. And then you have your fader. Below all of those, and that, that continues, of course, to the right. It repeats those style buttons, the solo, mute, uh, select, and record. They continue again. Um, eight times. Now in the bottom uh, far left corner and, and along the bottom we have these different buttons and, and we, can, um, re we can program these actually, these soft keys um, within uControl which is an application that you install uh, to manage these control surfaces like the uh, Pro Tools Dock or the Avid S1 um, and their other products. But let's go to the very bottom left uh, button in, uh, on the device. And it's shift. The next button to the right of that is control. To the right of that is option. To the right of that is command. And then the last four buttons are user one, two, three, and four. So user one, two, three, and four. And I have some of those programmed right now. For instance, uh, three and four, user three and four, they cycle uh, my track selection. So if I press user three, one jam four comp. And if I press user four, two Steve, they cycle my selection. One jam four comp, two Steve. I just have a few tracks in this se session. I'm in the mix window. If we uh, go to the top of this mix window, caps lock tracks. Home, and I go to the right. Track list one, jam four comp. I have this jam four comp uh, track. It's just uh, me and my buddy jamming. Here, I'll press play. So that's uh, me on the drums and my buddy Will Traver uh, playing the guitar. And I just thought this would be a cool way to demonstrate how it this Avid S1 works. So I'm going to just do some simple things just so that uh, 
anybody who uh, is interested in purchasing purchasing this will have an idea of how to use it or work it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, Steve at Baskis 360com And that's B-A-S-K-I-S 360.com. Steve at Baskis 360com So here we go. So if I use control P semicolon to make a selection, track selection. So let's track, let's select this first. One jam four comp. So my focus is there, right? Option shift L. One selected. One jam four comp audio. So now I, I, I can, of course, mute and solo this track. So if I press play, I was just muting it and since we don't have other tracks, I really can't solo it. But let's say on this track, let's check out what we have instantiated for plugins. So if I press track list pop one jam, if I press one, and this is a flow tools command, check out flowtools.org, F L O T O O L S dot O R G, and you'll learn more about this third party software program or uh, macros and scripts that help blind and visually impaired users be more efficient with Pro Tools. But if I press one, I should hear insert A, the plugin that's instantiated on it. Here we go. A, EQ37 band. So I have an EQ37 band, Avid plugin, instantiated. Let's press two for insert B. B, REQ2. REQ2. So this is a, I think, Renaissance EQ. It's by Waves. Let's press um, three. C bypassed. Dyn three compressor limiter. So dynamic three compressor limiter. This is an Avid plugin. It's on insert C. Let's uh, check out insert D or four. D bypassed. SSL comp. So another Waves plugin, uh, SSL compressor. So I have the compressors bypassed because I don't want it to affect the audio. But what we're going to do is. I'm going to show you with the buttons on the top here in the top row, this five set of buttons that are kind of the most important buttons, the ones you interact with the most uh, on the Avid S1 control surface. And these buttons again are, uh, when you find the five buttons, they are, the first button on the far left is insert, second one is EQ, third one is dynamics, fourth one is auxiliary, and fifth one is pan now i did not go over when you depress or hold down the sh surface shift button these buttons all have another layer of functionality uh, but i i'm keeping this demonstration pretty straightforward so the second button in this set of five is the eq button and since i have this second track attention or this first track one selected one jam four comp audio and remember, we went through the plugins that were instantiated on insert A, B, C, and D. A was the EQ37 band. So if I press this second button, EQ button, it will open up the first uh, EQ style plugin on the track that I have selected. So let's press button two, EQ. Pl plugin, REQ2 window. So I had already been cycling through it before it jumped to the REQ or the insert B. So if I close this window mix jam. and I press this EQ button again, it will go to the EQ37 band. Default view for EQ37 band. And it'll continue to cycle mix between the two. If I press it again, plug in REQ2 window. So we're back on the waves REQ. Now there were dynamic plugins or compressors that were on this track. So the third button in this set of five on the S1 control surface is the dynamic button. So if we press that button, Pl plugin SSL comp window, it jumped to the insert uh, D if I'm not mistaken. And if I press, if I close this window Mi and I press it again, I should get the dynamic three compressor Pl default view for DIN three compressor limiter. Now I'm just using command option W to close the window. Mix. The plug-in window. Now, let's say 
I want to not use the EQ and dynamic buttons to, as shortcuts to jump to those plugins, but I want to select the actual plugin. Uh, you would press the first button in the set of five and it's insert. And once you press that, when you use the previous and next page or page previous and page next buttons, which are to the left of the set of five buttons, you're able to uh, navigate from insert A, B, C, D. It doesn't announce anything, but if I press the previous uh, page previous button a bunch of times, I should be on insert A. So if I now go to my first channel strip encoder knob, so this far left knob, and if I depress it, what, what should happen is it should open up the very first EQ, EQ37 band. So let's depress it or push it down, this knob, this encoder knob. I'm going to push it down. Default view for EQ37 band. In order to get to the next plugin, we close this window. Mix. And I would press the insert button once again on the control surface. And then I would press page next. And then I would depress the encoder knob for the channel that I want to work on. So this channel is, is channel one, track one. So let's depress it. It should be REQ. Pl plugin, REQ2 window. Mix. So I'm going to close that window. And it, I'm going to press insert. Now I'm going to press, so we were on insert B. I'm going to press page next twice. So C, D. Now, if I depress the encoder knob, it should be the SSL compressor. So here we go. Plugin, SSL comp window. So there we go. So that's how you kind of jump between your EQ and dynamic plugins quickly, as well as any kind of insert effect or plugin um, with those particular buttons. Let's say we wanted to put a send on uh, on this first track. So I'm going to use voiceover in the mix window to hover over this first track. track. One jam four comp audio track. And I'm going to use a flow tools command control one to see if there's a, 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 a send assigned to send a, a unassigned. So there isn't. So I'm going to hold control and double tap one menu output sub menu. And now I'm going to go and look for, um, a bus bus, bus sub menu bus one, two stereo. I'm going to pick bus one, two window. So it opened up the send window. I'm going to close it. Command option W mix. J so now if I press control one, a bus one, two bus one, two. So if it becomes muted, then it says muted bus one, two. And so it's not muted right now, but if I press the aux button, which is one, two, three, four, the fourth button in the set of five here on the, S1 control surface. If I press this and I go to the first encoder knob and I find the select button, which is a little button. Uh, uh, there's two little buttons. The top one is select and the bottom one is N. This N button is the mute button. So if I press it and then I check with flow tools, control one. A muted, bus one, two. I have muted the, 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 the send A. So I'm going to press the in button on in this in near the in encoder knob one on you know channel strip one and check again with the key the computer keyboard control one uh, flow tools command to see if it's muted i should have unmuted it hey boss one two so it's not muted anymore let's go into this um send a window control double tap one window I'm going to go all the way to the end and move backwards. A little Auto bit. read. Arc solo. But 0.0. .0 level meter. 0.0. .0 volume numerical text. So so let's go a little Level bit. meter. 1 jam 4 cut. 0.0, .0 dB. Volume vertical fader. Mute. But 0. .0. So again, here in the window, if I press this in button, it should we should see mute and selected. So if I go to the left now, after pressing the N button. On state, mute button, on state, mute button. It announces that it's on state. So now if I press it again and then move my focus off and back One on. mute button. It's not muted. Let's go to the right and check out the volume. 0.0 .0 dB, volume, vertical fader. 
So this encoder knob that's on channel strip one on the control surface, if I turn it all the way to the right a little bit, we're going to get uh, a boost in the volume. It was at unity or zero, but now it should be like plus 12.0 plus 12 dB. If I hold option and I touch the encoder knob, it resets to unity to zero just automatically. I don't have to touch anything. I just hold option and, and touch the knob because it's touched. 0.0 dB. So let's move. Let's turn this uh, counterclockwise and turn it down and see what the reading is. Minus 21.9 dB. So we're at minus 21. Okay, quickly want to reset it. Option. And I touch the knob and now it's 0.0 dB. It's 0.0 .0 or unity. Well, you know, level. So that's, that's a Pro Tools shortcut. Um, and is very useful uh, when you're mixing. Mix. So last thing is pan. I, I closed that window, the send A window. And now if I press this fifth button in this five, the set of five buttons, we're in pan mode now. Now that first encoder knob, which we were using to adjust the volume for send A, is now, uh, use, we can adjust pan. So let, let, let's, let's do it on track two, actually. Two, Steve. And you'll hear my voice, you know, move to the left, I think, if you're, you know, wearing headphones or you're in a, you have a stereo set of speakers. So um, let me make sure option shift L. One selected, two Steve audio. So I have this selected. Now, if I turn this second encoder knob, my voice should move to the left. And now I'm in your left ear. If I turn it to the right, I start moving to the center and then back to the right. And so if I hold option and I touch the knob, I'm centered now again. So that's, that's pan. And one more thing before I let you go, if we were to open up an EQ on this, let's put the track select selection on track. One jam four comp. I just press control P to do that. Now if I press EQ. Plug in. REQ2 window. Mix. So it opened up insert B, the REQ. Now I close the window. If I brush my hands across any of the knobs, the encoder knobs, it's going to automatically open up the window, uh, plug in window. Pl plug in REQ2. So I didn't touch any button. I just put my hand, like, rested my hand on all the knobs, you know. Again, if I close it, mix, and I just touch any of these knobs, Pl plug in REQ2 window. It opens up the last plug-in window that was opened. Mix. So if I press EQ again, the EQ button, minding my hand and not touch, you know, not touching the encoder knobs, which are touch sensitive, uh, I can cycle back to the EQ37 band. Default view for EQ37 band. Mix. If I close it, and now I'm just in the mix window, and if I just wanted to get back to that plug-in, I just touch default view for EQ37. I just touch the encoders and it just pops up. So that's that's such a cool thing and uh, can be very helpful uh, for people. So I hope that this you know overview uh, of the layout of the S1 as well as the you know operation of it, uh, this rudimentary, simple, uh, down and dirty uh, demonstration is helpful for anybody who finds this video on YouTube. Again, if you have any questions, uh, please reach out, steve at baskis360.com. If you like the video, hit the like. Uh, subscribe, please, Baskis360, and, uh, and stay tuned to more, for more videos. Take care, everybody.